review. Uh, I'm going to point out a couple things here before I go any further. We weren't able to cover all the lessons that we wanted to. We did not cover perfect square trinomials, which is from lesson 7-8. We did the first part on difference of squares, but we didn't talk about perfect square trinomials. So you can skip or cross out problems 27, 28, and 31. We just don't have time. We ran out of time when we were doing our lesson. So uh, on this video, I'm going to do problems 25, 29, 30, 32, and 33. And again, we're going to skip over 27, 28, and 31. Uh, anyway, so just letting you know that. So uh, I'm going to zoom back in here, make sure I focus. And so, um, sorry, let me straighten this up. So on problem 25, uh, above it, it says, uh, I can factor trinomials uh, in the form of x squared plus bx plus c. Uh, this is implying that a is equal to one here. They didn't put an a here, but this is essentially, we're factoring trinomials where a is equal to one. Uh, and so um, this is gonna be a, a short video, a short problem because um, we don't have to do all the, the steps that we did in problems 19, 21, and 23 on the previous video. So here I'm gonna label my a value, my b value, and my c value. Uh, I'm gonna put an x here, and we're gonna multiply my a times my c on top. I write my b down here in the bottom. And if I look, uh, my a times c is a, is a positive 36, and my b value is a negative 13. So we need to find two numbers that will multiply to 36, uh, but add to a negative 13. And so um, you can use uh, the Desmos trick, which I was uh, showing you in other videos. Uh, but let's see here, so we'll do um, 36 which is my uh, a times c, 36 divided by x. <coughs> I'll go to my table, and I'll help. this will help me find uh, factors of 36. So we have 1 times 36, 2 times 18. So I'll write those down. Uh, and if I click the 2 and I hit enter, it'll I can keep hitting enter, and it'll populate some more values here. So we have 3 and 12, uh, and then we have 4 and 9. Uh, we also have 6 and 6. My goodness, there's a lot here. So um, all of these uh, are factors of 36. And so we need to find two of them that have a difference of 13 or add to 13. Uh, well, 1 and 36 add to 37, but they have a difference of 35. That doesn't match the 13. 2 and 18 will add to 20, but have a difference of 16. That doesn't match. 2 and 12 will add to 15 or have a difference of, um, of 9. So that doesn't match. 4 and 9, though, these add to 13. So this is one to look on to. Uh, 6 and 6 add to 12. They subtract to 0. So those don't work out. So it looks like 4 and 9 are the factors that will multiply to 36. But we need to figure out how do we get to negative 13. Well, if these are both negative, that gets me negative 13. And so these are the two values that I need to use here. So negative 4 times the negative 9 will multiply to 36. But if we add these together, we get negative 13. Uh, and so those are the factors. And remember, when a is equal to, to 1 here, we have our answers for our factors. I can just do x minus 4 times x minus 9, and that will get us our answer. And you can use the FOIL method or box method. Uh, and when you multiply these, it should return back to my x squared minus 13x plus 36. And so this is the right answer here. So I'm going to now... Uh, kind of step out a little bit. We're going to look at the next section. And so the next section here says um, I can factor a difference of two squares. Or in class, we call this just difference of squares. And so I'm going to write down that equation. Uh, it's in your, it's on the back of your, uh, uh, your notes, by the way. Uh, on the back of your notes, uh, we have the mathematics chart. <coughs> and we have the difference of squares equation here. Difference of squares, it says ax squared minus bx uh, equals a minus b times a plus b. We just, again, we didn't have time to talk about perfect square trinomials. I hope to be able to get to this in the future, but for um, the review and for the test, we're just not going to be able to have time to do that. So I'm going to write down that equation here. I'm going to do uh, a uh, squared minus b squared. This equals uh, a uh, minus b times a plus b. And so 29 and 30 are going to have um, these kind of problems. Sorry, I'm trying to get the uh, camera to line up. 
there's a delay in my video and, and so anyway so so if you look at this particular problem um, it says factor each polynomial uh, this is if we look here it has characteristics of this equation here uh, notice it's a binomial binomial we have a subtraction symbol between the two uh, and then uh, we have a perfect square for my x squared and we have a perfect square for 16 and so my answer should look something like like what we have here so we're gonna have two binomials with a minus and a plus and if I square root my my a squared again this is my a squared square root of x squared is x and then if I square root my b squared that gives me my b value square root of 16 is, is 4 and this is our answer so um, you can use the box method or foil method uh, I can do it real quick I might as well so x times x is x squared uh, x times uh, 4 is a 4x. Uh, the, 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 for FOIL, I'm doing FOIL. These are the inner two. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And then the last two, negative 4 times positive 4 is a negative 16. And this is the characteristic of the difference of squares where the middle two terms, 4x and minus 4x, will cancel out. And that ends up with x squared minus 16, which is what we had for our original problem. And so this is the right answer here. Again, we, this is from uh, Lesson 7-8, if you have any questions on, on what's happening here. So let's look at B. B is a, a little bit trickier because 50, if I go into Desmos here, 50 is not a perfect square. So what's going on here? So if I look here, uh, the square root, I'm going to do SQRT. We can type in 50. Notice we get a decimal here. And if you want the square root, you can also just hit this button down here and do 50. Again, it's a decimal, so it doesn't work out. And 32, oops, so, sorry, I'm looking at the 50 here. So if I type in 32, it's also not a perfect square, so, so something is wrong here. But notice that these are even numbers, and even numbers, um, you can factor out at least a 2. And so what can I factor out from 50 and 32, and, and this will make it <coughs> potentially a, a difference of squares problem. So if I were to do the greatest common factor, GCF, Type in 50 and uh, negative 32. It looks like we can factor out a 2 here. So I can factor out a 2 here. And well, what's 50 divided by 2? That's uh, 25. And so uh, we can't factor out any variables here because we have uh, no x with the 32. So we're going to keep this as x squared. And then what's half of a negative 32? That's negative 16. And so this can uh, factor out to 2 times 25x squared minus 16. And notice, 25 is a perfect square, uh, x squared is a perfect square, 16 is a perfect square. We have a binomial, so it matches the characteristics here with a subtraction sign in the middle. So my answer is going to look like, like what we have here, or what we have on, on either the example <coughs> for the equation for difference of perfect squares, uh, or, or what we have for this previous problem. And so we should be able to understand that um, we can factor this out even further. So I'm keeping the 2 here, because we factored out the 2. That has to be part of the answer. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a minus sign here, and I'm going to have a plus sign here, because that's the characteristics of, of the factors for this particular kind of problem. And if I square root 25, that gets me a 5 for both of these. Uh, that's part of the uh, square rooting my a squared. And then if I square root my x squared, that leaves me an x next to the 5. And then if I square root my 16, we get a 4 on the opposite side of the, the negative and the, the plus sign here. And so 5x minus 4 times 5x plus 4, if you factored these, <coughs> sorry, not factor, multiplied these or foiled these um, using the box method uh, or foil method, you, um, you would get back to your 25x squared minus 16. And if you multiply these by, by 2, um, you would get it back to their 50x squared minus 32. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I did this on a previous example. Uh, but this would be your answer to, uh, to 29, 29b. And so let's look at 30. <coughs> 30 comes out. Sorry, I'm coughing. I've got a little bit of a cold. If I look at 30, um, there's a little bit of an issue here when I copied this. This should say 121 here. So it looks like an I, but it's a 121. So it says the rectangular room number sign on Miranda's classroom door uh, covers an area of 
100 m squared minus 121 squared units. What are the dimensions of the sine? So we have, it says our rectangle. They're giving us the area and we're gonna find like the length and the width here. And um, how do we do that? Well, we need to factor this, right? This is a lot like uh, what we did on um, previous problems. Uh, which problem was that, by the way? That was like problem number, um, number, uh, gosh, sorry. I don't know what happened, what happened to that problem. Oh, um, problem number 23. So in the, on the, on the videos we, were, we I did earlier. So, um, but this one here isn't a typical factoring problem because notice we have a, a perfect square for 100. Uh, M squared is a perfect square. And you might not be familiar, but 121, the square root of 121 is 11. And so this is also a perfect square. So our answer is going to look a lot like what we had over here. And so um, I'm going to just write that down again over here because um, my, I just don't have a lot of, um, you can't see it since it's too far off the, the, the screen here. So um, our answer is going to uh, look like uh, the A minus B times A plus B. Uh, and so I'm just going to write that down, right? And so I'm going to have uh, the negative sign here and the plus sign here. And so if I square root 100, we get 10. I square root M, we get an M here. And then... I square root 121, I told you it's 11. And so um, 11 goes here. And so uh, this is a little funny how I did this. So 10m minus 11 is one of our dimensions and 10m plus 11 is another one of our dimensions. And so one of these would be the length, one of these would be the width here, but this is the answer to number 30. You can use the difference of squares to solve this problem. So I'm jumping down to number 32 and 33. These are going to look familiar. These are from uh, unit six. We're going to have one of these problems on the test. It says, I can simplify expressions using the law of, uh, laws of exponents. Uh, and so if you look at the back of your notes, uh, the back of your notes have the laws of exponents here. And I've written on this um, mathematics chart, so I apologize for that. But we're going to be using, you know, the product of powers and quotient of powers and power powers, rational exponents. This is not going to be in this particular example. We have negative exponents. And so uh, we need to understand how to use these. And so um, I'm going to just start looking at the problem here and kind of see what we need to do to simplify this problem. So 32 and 33 are very similar. Uh, again, these are important to understand for your test. You will see a problem like 32 or 33 on your test. So I'm going to do the first one here. It says simplify the expression. I'm going to group like terms here. So I'm going to do 32 over 4. I'm going to do my uh, times x to the 7th over x to the 4th. Uh, and then I'm going to group my uh, y to the 5th over y squared. And I'm going to treat these individually here. So let me focus that a little bit. So if you take 32 divided by 4, you will get 8. So we just treat these numbers like a regular number, right? So 32 divided by 4 is just 8. Right? So just 8. Now, when we're dealing with uh, dividing exponents, <coughs> or, uh, we're going to be using the uh, negative exponent rule here, or so the quotient of powers rule, sorry, uh, where um, when we have similar bases that have exponents and we're dividing, we can just subtract those two, um, those two exponents. So uh, that's what I'm going to do on this problem. So I'm going to rewrite this as x to the 7th minus 4. And then this next one is going to be y to the 5th minus 2. And then that just simplifies down to uh, uh, 8 times x to the 3rd times y to the 3rd. And that would be the answer to this particular problem. So... That is, is how you do number 32. And 33 is going to be similar, but a little bit more complicated because we have these negative exponents. So uh, I'm going to handle these negative exponents before I do anything else. Whenever we have a negative exponent, <coughs> it needs to be rewritten on the opposite side of the division symbol, and we can change the sign from a negative to a positive. So I'm going to have 24 uh, over 3. 
This x to the negative 6, I can put to the bottom here and make it x to the positive 6. This x to the negative 3 can move to the top and make it x to the positive 3. And then the y squared over y to the fifth, those stay where they are because uh, we don't have any negative exponents here. And so now I can treat this a lot like I did on number 32, where I'm just going to focus on each section or each um, type of uh, variable or coefficient. So I'm going to break it up into the, the coefficients and then just the variables here. And so uh, 24 over 3 is just 8. Uh, we will have here times uh, x to the third minus 6 times y squared minus 5. That reduces down to um, 8 times uh, x to the negative 3 times y to the negative 3. Uh, and then this goes back to the uh, negative exponent uh, property, where if we have a negative exponent, uh, we can again rewrite it and move it to the, the, the bottom, in this set case, the denominator of the fraction. And so this is going to end up being 8 over x to the third, y to the third. That would be our answer on number 33, because those would both move to the denominator. And that's our answer for 33. Uh, again, study 32, 33. You're going to see a problem like, like this, uh, one of these on the test. And so I'm going to stop this video. And hope this helps out. Have a good day. Bye-bye.